Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post nail tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, I am starting off by removing the previous design that we did on my client's nails. If you missed that video and are interested, make sure to check it out. I will leave it linked for you guys. Super easy and super fun set of nails we did on her for summer. So I'm starting off by using my e-file. I have my Kiara Sky rechargeable e-file for today's video at a speed of 9,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using the Kiara Sky Rose Gold 5-in-1 bit. It is my favorite. This one is in medium grit. I'm just gently filing off that design with very light pressure. I do not want to mess with the acrylic that is already on her nail. I simply want to remove the top coat and the design. So make sure you are using very light pressure during this process or you will have to add a little bit more acrylic here and there which can just take a little bit more time than what you really need to spend, especially when just doing a fill. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that and repeat it on the rest of the nails. Now when it comes to doing a fill, I always make sure and ask if they want me to do any sort of cut down or trimming the length. And she did agree with just a little bit, basically what had grown out. So I'm just taking my e-file very gently and filing that off. You want to make sure you are holding the finger very, very sturdy with a lot of pressure. <laughs> it can cause skipping if you kind of have the finger loose and you always want to make sure you have a really good grip on your e-file as well because you do not want it to skip. It will terrify you and your client and if you're working really close to her skin, you can accidentally nick the client. So you definitely want to avoid that. Once I have done the trim down and filed off the previous design, we are going to be prepping the natural nail. Very small amount of growth she has. I have mentioned it before on videos where I do her nails, she comes every two weeks consistently. So it does mean she has very little growth and that is absolutely fine. 
I still find it so satisfying to do a fill as it just freshens up the set and we like to do fills with a different design so it looks like it's a completely different set. So I'm starting off by using my e-file at a speed of 4000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using my mandrel bit and a sanding band. I'm just going gently around that cuticle area, basically gently pushing back the cuticle while buffing off the shine from her natural nail. At this point, if she has any lifting, I will go ahead and take care of that. But because she hasn't had them on for that long, very, very minimal lifting, if any. Um, basically, any lighter areas that you see on her nail is basically the top coat. So I'm just gently filing that off while buffing the shine off. And again, like mentioned earlier, gently pushing back that cuticle. Once I'm done buffing off the shine, I am using my needle bit. This one is my favorite. It helps to get into those hard to reach areas right around the cuticle area that you might have missed with the mandrel bit. Mandrel bits are very effective. However, because they are so thick, it is hard to get into those very small and snug areas. So this bit does the trick. As you can see, you can still find that it is removing a lot of dead skin from that area. So I'm just going in gently, still at 4,000 RPMs, filing that off very, very carefully. For our next step, we are using the cuticle ball bed. It is my favorite to buff off the cuticles very, very gently. I have now moved my e-file up to 5,000 RPMs. I have found that that speed is a little bit more effective than the four that I used to use it on. So if you feel like you have stubborn cuticle that you just cannot get rid of, up it a little bit on the speed and that should do the trick. I'm just gently buffing off that cuticle. This takes the place from having to trim or cut anything off with the cuticle nippers. I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails.
Now I'm taking my hand file and gently filing the sides, just kind of freshening up the shape that we have previously created on her nails. And then the tip as well as when you trim them or cut them down a little bit, that can get a little bit slanted sometimes. Very light pressure. I'm not trying to remove any bulk from the sides. I just want to freshen up that shape. Now going in with a lint-free wipe and some Young Nail Swipe, I am thoroughly cleaning the surface of the nail, specifically focusing on the natural nail area. This is going to help remove any excess dust while dehydrating that nail, so this works in place of a dehydrator. Now I'm going in with my primer. This is the Not Polish Triple X Bond. It is my go-to recently, so definitely check that out. If you are having issues with lifting, make sure you get all your prep done good and use a very good primer. I am going to be using two coats of this. I find that that helps prevent any lifting if any issues have happened. So make sure you add a second coat if you are still struggling, even after you are perfecting your prep. Now very quickly, we are going to be doing a fill. I find that my prep takes me a lot longer than the actual acrylic application. <laughs> so I always think that's funny whenever I do fills. I am using for today's video, the Profiles Backstage Acrylic Brush. I kind of alternate back and forth just depending on what I am doing for the service. But I find that I like smaller brushes specifically for fills. And this one is just perfect for that. So I'll leave that link down below. I love it. The quality is great. We are using Not Polish Nude Me for today's video. It has been the perfect nude that complements her skin tone. So if you're looking for a really good nude, that one is a good one as well. Now I am adding the acrylic on the cuticle area, gently pushing it up while holding the finger in a downward position and then very quickly blending that downwards. It is very effortless once you get the hang of your liquid to powder ratio and you are working with really good products. And then if I feel like I need to rebalance any part of the nail, I will do that at this point. You'll see me do that kind of throughout the process of doing the fill if I feel it needs a little bit of thickness anywhere. So for example there, I felt like the apex could do a little bit better. So I went ahead and added another bead. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the fill process. Very simple, like I said. Once you guys get your liquid to powder ratio down correctly, make sure you guys check out my beginner nail tech playlist. I have all the videos that will help you guys become a better nail tech if you guys are struggling and you are a beginner. Make sure you guys check that out.
Once I'm done with my acrylic application and everything is nice and dry, I am making sure that I'm tapping to hear that clicking noise. That is going to be the deciding factor on whether you can go ahead and file or not. So I'm going in with my e-file once again. I have my e-file at a speed of 8,000 RPMs. I'm still using my 5-in-1 bit for that filing process. I love it because it helps you get right around that cuticle area and then use the thicker part for the length of the nail. I'm just going gently around that cuticle area, making sure that acrylic is nice and flush to the natural nail. This is going to help prevent lifting as well. You wanna make sure you don't have too much product in that area as that can cause snagging, which leads to lifting. So I'm just making sure, again, it's nice and flat on that area. And then I'm just filing the surface of the nail, making sure that it is nice and smooth. Very, very careful with my pressure as I do not want to remove bulk product. And once again, I'm taking my hand file from Tammy Taylor and filing the sides and flipping the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective, filing the tip that way, and then making sure everything is nice and perfect and prep for our nail art. Next, we are buffing the surface of the nail with a sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage. These are my favorite. I am going in on these nails as I want to make sure that the surface is super perfect in prep for the nail art. You want that perfect canvas and as smooth as possible for easy application. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails.
And of course, I'm going back in with a lint-free wipe and some swipe, cleaning the surface of the nail thoroughly and prep for the nail art. You can also have your client go and wash their hands. However, I prefer this method as I feel like it gets the job done a lot quicker. Now starting off our nail art application, I am using the Not Polished Nail Art Brush. This one is the smaller one. They have longer lengths, so I will leave the exact one linked down below. I started using this because my old one called it quits on me. And instead of ordering a new one, I feel like I need to give other products a chance. <laughs> so I went ahead and tried this one and I actually really like it. So I am drawing out that French design. And then with my 3D nail art brush, basically any thicker brush that you have that's going to cover more surface, I'm taking that and infilling the rest of the nail. I am not perfecting this white coat. I am using the Profiles Backstage White Gel Paint. It is very thick and opaque. However, when using white, you want to make sure you do like one or two coats. But because this design is basically me adding the white as the background to make the pastel colors pop a little bit more. I am not by any means perfecting this application. I just want a thin coat. Whenever I do nail art and it's going to require me to layer on a lot, I try to make everything as thin as possible. And because I know that I just want to use it as a background, I'm not really concerned about getting it perfect. So I'm just going ahead and adding that on the rest of the nails, my white base for the actual nail art. All I see is blessings, got no time for stressing. Don't believe in failures in my life, it's only lessons. They just make a room for what I'm on now. I don't got a clue, but I know the one who does know how. Oh, wow. It's like I'm learning the game with the maker I already know now. 
Again, remember we are curing this white gel paint before we go in with the pastels. I just go ahead and place it in there for the full minute while I go ahead and do the other hand. Now for our pastel colors, I am taking the teal color from the Profiles Backstage Gel Paint and I added a ton of white to it to make it this really pale kind of teal blue. She wanted a little bit more on the teal side versus like the sky blue, so I went ahead and mixed it for her to her liking. Again, using that thicker brush, this is a 3D nail art brush from Amazon. I'm just going in randomly on the nail and kind of eyeballing it where I place it. It's gonna be like a splotchy paint stroke design, so I'm not too concerned, again, about making it super perfect because this look calls for it being messy. So I'm just adding blue kind of randomly onto the top of that white base. And as you can see, I feel like it just made it a lot more vibrant versus if I went directly on top of the nude with this, especially because I'm trying to use really thin coats. I can see the blessings. I can feel your presence. Leaning on the change in my heart for your endeavors. I pray I'm your reflection. I fiend for your correction. The cross brought the connection in through Jesus' perfection. Life done hit me crazy, been more stressed than ever. Living like whatever. Through the rain, I feel you drawing closer. Lord, make me better. I, take me, shape me, use me. I am yours. Take me, break me for the glory of the Lord. Okay, not only does he hold me when I'm down and feel I'm folding, he my coach when I'm the goal. He never lonely, got that hope in he who holy, holy, holy. Keep that rugged cross all on me. Need that spirit to control me. Seek that word to come and mold me. Yeah. yeah. It's like I can feel the blessings coming my way. Yeah. It's like I can feel the blessings coming my way. Now we're taking a very light pink. Again, I mixed that using the Profiles Backstage Pink with tons of white. Also made it to her liking. And I'm using three different brushes for these steps. So I actually am taking another bigger brush and then a thinner one. So I'm going in with the pink with a thick brush as well. Just randomly splotting it on there and really just dragging it. And then going in randomly with the orange. The orange, I took the neon orange from Profiles Backstage and added tons of white to make it this pretty pastel color. And I'm making sure that all the colors are still wet as that will help it blend nicely into the other colors. I'm sorry I'm not perfect but I knew that I wouldn't be. I guess it's for the best, you know, the worst in me. I'm no good at being good, but I never said I was. I'm not feeling this understood, cause I'm trying hard to love. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my actions, they haunt me, and I'll never live it down. Once I'm done with the colors, I'm making sure that I'm curing it in the light once again while I work on the other hand. And then I'm going to be outlining the top of the French smile line with the gold gel paint from Not Polish. And I'm just taking their thin nail art brush once again and outlining that very, very carefully. Chance. I'm too selfish for that 
And of course, at the end, when I'm done with everything, I go ahead and ask if she wants matte or shiny. She actually asked for matte for the nude and then shiny for the actual color and design, which I feel like was a really good call on that because it really makes the nail art pop. So I'm just carefully starting off with the matte. I figured it would be easier to clean up the shiny if I got it on top of the matte versus getting matte on shiny, especially because the gold is glitter. You want it to stay perfectly shiny. So I'm going in with matte first and then curing that in the light and then adding the shiny top coat to the tip. And both are from Not Polish. I'm using matte it and gloss it. Switching over to the other hand, I had already applied the matte top coat, let that cure. Now I'm going in with Gloss It from Not Polish and adding that to the tip of the nail very carefully around that smile line and making sure that it has an even coat, really pressing that into that nail art so it gets into any little creases and divots that the gel paint might have created. You want to fully, fully protect that design, especially because it is on the tip. This is for my day one Once everything is fully dry, I'm very carefully applying cuticle oil to her cuticle area and I am trying to not get that onto the matte top coat as that can give it kind of a shiny cast which I absolutely hate and it is kind of hard to clean off without getting the cuticle oil off of her skin. So I'm going very carefully and then just gently rubbing that into her skin. It melts right in so that helps a ton as well. That basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a ton. And I will see you guys later. Okay, well.